Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Carolee Makes Cards. I find myself complaining about winter, but it's typically after a cold snap or a big dump of snow and I have to shovel. But after freshly fallen snow or hoarfrost glistening on trees, it is truly the most gorgeous time of year, especially at night. This watercolor featuring Simon Says Stamp's Warmest Wishes tries to capture the beauty of a winter night with a cute snowman through texture, and I have some simple tricks to show you. I'm going to be working on Canson XL watercolor paper. My panel's a little bit larger than an A2 size so that I can cut it down later. I have a mask that has been cut with a circle die. One of the dies from Simon's Stitch Slopes and Hills has been used to cut the masking paper and a piece of cardstock so that I can create a hillside horizon. So here is my first trick for creating dimension in this snowy backdrop through shadows. I'm applying sweeps of texture paste with a palette knife. I'm working with Nouveau Embellishment Mousse Mother of Pearl, but any paste will work. A thin line is applied along the cardstock to create the horizon. I make sweeping motions in the foreground here and there with the paste. When I'm done, I go back with my palette knife and lift off some of the thickness of the mousse. This will create further texture. Everything that has the paste will be the white snow. It acts like a resist. I have a few sets of watercolor, but the one I reach for most often is Magello Mission Gold. Before I apply a light color wash of lilac to my snowy hillside, the texture paste was left to dry. It was a thin layer, so it didn't take very long. A little bit more saturated purple is applied along the top of the hillside and as I work towards the foreground, I work in some soft blues. I'm not going to apply the watercolor across the entire foreground. I'm going to leave some of that soft lilac so that there's lots of color variation in my shadows. Once the trees and the snowman are added to this panel, additional shadow work will be done. Okay, so the first thing that I need to say is that this paper mask is not intended for watercoloring. I had this circle mask sitting on my desk for so long, I just thought I'm gonna use it. I should have used liquid masking fluid, but I rationalized that not everybody would have this on hand, but they probably would have masking paper. So I was careful with the amount of water that was being placed around the mask, and if there was too much on there, I tried to pick it up quickly with a paper towel. There will not be that crisp edge between the moon and the sky that I would have had if I'd masked properly. It will be quite soft, but I like it. To create the night sky, I'm using the same purple and blue that was in the snow and then adding black in. I like to build up my color, so I'm going to dry this first layer and it's going to lighten quite a bit. Clean water is brushed on the sky and then I go in and start adding in the color all over again. The purple and blue will serve as undertones. Now I'm going to focus on really creating that night sky and adding in lots of black. Okay, so now for the second trick for creating texture. I'm going to sprinkle table salt all around my night sky. The salt will absorb the watercolor liquid, leaving a pretty textural finish. The watercolor is left to dry naturally. There will be a few crystals left on the panel. Don't try to rub them off with your hand. It might hurt. Use a microfiber cloth or a paper towel. And look at that pretty texture. The paper mask has been removed and I'm applying clean water to my moon. As I apply the yellow paint, I don't need to worry about it going anywhere that I don't want it. It is going to just stay within the wet area. 
the dry edge between the sky and the moon is like a barrier. Watercolors will not flow unless they have a means to do so. I'm dropping in a little bit of watered down black just to create some shadows and this will be in preparation for my next trick. I have some crumpled up cling film that I'm just going to apply directly on my moon and I'm going to let it dry. Because I'm using light colors, the texture is very subtle and soft. This technique, however, is very dramatic on darker colors. I want a black emboss sentiment, but I'm not a fan of using black embossing powder. So I stamp with black onyx versifying ink and then clear emboss it. I use the grid lines on my Misty to make sure that my secondary sentiment is straight and then it is simply stamped with the black onyx ink. I trim down the mask that I used for the moon to cover up my sentiment. And this is my next trick for adding texture, spattering with watered down white gouache. Gouache is a water-based paint and it is perfect for this technique. Because it is opaque, there is no worries about it absorbing the color underneath it. And when it is dry, it not only looks like it has texture, it actually does. I love this snowman with his outstretched twig arms. It's like he is saying, behold the beauty of winter. This cutie was stamped with Versamark ink and embossed in white. So after the fact, I wasn't really happy with those white embossed twig arms. Thank goodness I hadn't removed my stamp right away from the Misty, so I was able to do a little bit of masking, stamp those arms in black versifying ink, and then emboss them in clear embossing powder. It's pretty hard to see this image with its white embossed lines, so the first thing that I'm going to do is just put a lilac color wash over the toque and scarf. The alternating sections on both the hat's band and the scarf will be done in dark purple. And then I will go in on the lighter sections and add a little bit of shadow work. After some soft rose for the cheeks, some pale orange for the carrot nose, dark purple for the buttons, I'll return to the soft lilac color wash to add in some shadows around the snowman's head and body. Just a little bit of heat and this snowman is dry and ready to be fussy cut. stamp set comes with three different sizes of trees. I'm stamping them with Versamark on Simon's Midnight Green cardstock. They are going to be embossed in Hero Arts Puff Embossing Powder. This embossing powder has a matte textured appearance. To really accentuate the texture, I'm going to emboss the trees two times. Like the snowman, the trees are fussy cut. The panel was trimmed down to four inches by five and a quarter inches and mounted on black foam before being attached to black cardstock that was just a little bit larger and then on to an A2 size card base. The elements were adhered to the card. For a little bit of dimension, the snowman and the tree in the foreground were adhered with foam squares. Purple was added in at the base of all of the trees and the snowman to create shadows. This card was finished up with a handful of clear sequins topped with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. And that completes this winter night scene with Simon Says Stamps Warm Wishes featuring simple tricks that can be used to create texture. Thanks so much for stopping by and as always, 
I appreciate your visit.